Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now in the previous few weeks we've been working hard on our castle mega base and it is looking absolutely fantastic. However, today we're going to be working on something else because building something of this magnitude takes a lot of time and planning and to be honest I simply haven't planned the next part of the build yet. So we're going to be moving on to something that I've been meaning to do for quite some time and just seemingly never found the time. Yes, I'm talking about a very special project, something I've been mulling over for ages and today is the day that I'm finally going to kick it off. And if you've no idea what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the cavern underneath the mushroom lake. Yes, it has been here for quite a while and it is looking absolutely terrible and I think it's time we did something about it as you can see here's where we've dug out some moss and there's just nonsense all over the place the terrain is looking very rough and I think it's high time we did something about it now as you might recall from previous episodes this actually used to be a chasm right next to my house and now it's going to become something much much more so we've leveled out the dirt on the floor and this is going to be a cave leading to something fantastic. I am going to be building a Dwarven Forge. But of course you can't just have an ancient Dwarven Forge in the middle of nowhere. You need something which leads you there and this is what this cave is going to be. But first let's clear out all of the stuff in this chest. There's some pretty good stuff in here. So let's start off by tidying up a little bit. And the idea behind this cave is that the dwarves use this to access their forge and this was all built many, many centuries ago, perhaps even millennia ago. And of course, at some stage the dwarves left these lands and the tunnel became disused, abandoned and eventually nature took over. So now that we have an idea of what we're shooting for, we're going to start off by simply creating a little template for the roof. And of course, we need to do both sides. So let's take a look and see what we've got so far. And that is a pretty good start. Next, I'm going to lay out the floor because that'll give us a proper base to start working from. And the first thing I need to do is dig up the existing dirt on the floor. After that, we'll replace it with some stone, some cobblestone and the like because we want to make it look like the dwarves had a well-used path going through here. Of course, this is going to be quite a big job. As you can see, there's quite a bit of floor to be dug out and replaced. And of course, over here, we still have a massive hole in the ground. And we're going to need to cover this up as well. So let's jump straight in and let's fix this floor. And the floor is done and it's looking pretty awesome. Now, of course, the next thing we need to do is take care of this area over here because what we have here at the moment is simply a big hole over a lake. And this is eventually going to be the forge room. So we're going to need a sturdy, solid and flat floor over here. So let's light it up and let's get it covered. And we're going to start over here. I'm just going to do the floor in stone first. And then once we've got the whole stone floor laid out, we can start changing some of the blocks for some mossy cobblestone, some mossy stone bricks, some stone bricks, and of course, we'll leave some of the stone be as well. However, in this corner, it's getting a little bit dark, so I think we're going to need to put up a few torches just to keep any monsters from jumping on me while I work. And the floor is complete. I've added in all of the mossy stone, the bricks and the like. And eventually this wall we're going to need to dig out because that I think is going to be a little bit too small for the forge room. But we'll get to that on a later stage. Right now we're going to carry on with the pathway and we're going to see if we can get a concept going. And for that I'm going to need a bunch of dripstone. 
which is a bit of a problem because right now I think I am the proud owner of zero stacks of dripstone. And looking at the length of this path, we're going to need quite a few stacks, perhaps even a shulker box or two. So let's pop over to the warehouse and check out our supplies. And indeed, I was correct. I have no dripstone whatsoever in stock, which means it's time to visit a few caves. And I want to stick to some of the caves that I've already explored just to be on the safe side. I don't want to go crawling around in some darkness. Eh, but it seems that, that cave has no dripstone in it. So let's move over to another cave, which I think I recall did have some dripstone in it. And it seems I was horribly mistaken. Cave number two is a lush cave with tons and tons of clay, but no dripstone either, which means I need to go and find some more caves to explore. And hopefully I can find dripstone in one that I've already been in. And I'm going to start looking a little bit closer to home. I'm going to go down into my trusty cave down here that I've been using to dig out all sorts of stuff. And I've lit up a lot of it, but there are some dark areas that I might need to go and check out because I can't remember exactly if I have seen any dripstone around here anywhere. And um, yeah, there's some darkness. And as you can see, we've already got a zombie coming towards us. So let's just take care of him quickly. Grab our bow and bye bye. So let's get our rockets back in our hand. Eh, he's still alive. We'll take care of that and then let's go check it out. And the problem with this particular cave is that there is deep dark everywhere. We can hardly move without getting some shriekers going off. And the last thing I need right now is a warden. So I'm sticking to the... Ouch! <sighs> Skeleton. Anyway, as I said, I'm sticking to the top of the caves. I don't want to go too deep. I don't want to summon a warden because that would quite possibly mean the end of this world. And I'm not quite ready to let go yet. And oh, we've got a zombie down there as well. Let's see. Eh, I missed. Come on. You know what? You get to live today, my friend. Anyway, we've got some glow ink here and we've got some more darkness up here. We've got a creeper down there. But the one thing we do not have is some dripstone. So I think this cave... Oh, hello. And bye-bye. And we got an achievement. Ah, I think that's the first time I've killed anything near Skulk. Anyway, as I said, there is nothing for us in this cave. So let's get out of here and let's go check out another one. And this, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is Cave number four so let's go see what we have down here i can't remember uh no this is another lush cave oh, i remember now i don't think there's any ripstone in this one either but there are some zombies and we can use them for some target practice oh there's a creeper down there as well let's get him where did he go oh there we are nah it's a zombie and i missed <laughs> but i got him that time Anyway, uh, as I said, I don't think there's any dripstone in this cave either, which means, ladies and gents, we need to go find yet another cave to explore and hope we can get the goodies there. So let's just make our way out. And then we will go and check out another cave that I know of that is quite close to here that I haven't explored yet. Let's go. And this, of course, is cave number five and this cave is actually right underneath the castle it is a massive cave and i have only explored a little bit right next to and underneath the castle so there's still plenty of cave to check out and hopefully in this one we're gonna find the dripstone we need but jeez i haven't seen this much stone in a long long time in fact, I haven't seen this much stone in a cave ever. If you look at it, it is just stone literally everywhere. There's a little bit of dirt here and there, but just look at this. The entire surface. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've got some andesite there and a bit more dirt there, but not much else to go on. And oh, zombie. Hello and bye bye. All right. 
And he's brought a friend as well. We'll give him the same welcome and then let's check it out and see if there's anything but stone around here. I can't really see down there, but it doesn't look like dripstone at all. Let's just open up this area, get some light going here, just so we don't have to worry about too many mobs spawning all around us. I think there's a few on our tail. I can hear them grunting and groaning, but we'll just light up this area here. Go all the way to the end and then we'll deal with the guys who's coming after us. Of course, there's a zombie and I think there's probably a few more. Yeah, I can see them in the distance over there. So let's just wait and hello. And then, of course, there are a bunch over there in the far, far distance. Got him. Skeleton down there, which I missed. But not the second time, and even more zombies. And let's just light up this area down here as well, because there is still a massive area down here to check out. And I just want to keep as many of the mobs away as possible. Now, of course, there are a bunch that have already spawned. I hope that I don't run... Ah, oh, okay, I've run into them. And there's three on my tail. So we've got three zombies, at least one skeleton. Let's just get rid of the skeleton over there. And then we'll take care of these zombies. That guy's got a sword. He can be dangerous. And threat neutralized. But still no dripstone. And this is getting a little bit old. I am in cave number six. And so far, no luck. We've got a bunch of mobs once again. Let's just take care of that creepy in the distance and then armor boy and I think there's some skeletons. Yeah, there's a skeleton right over there. Let's get rid of him. There we go. And another one. I'm getting really good. Uh, as I was saying, I'm getting really good with this bow, but apparently this guy is determined to prove me wrong. So let's just take care of him. There we go. I feel a little bit better now and then we can go check out the rest of this cave. And so far, no luck. I had to go up to get some more torches. And of course, it has filled up with mobs once again. So let's just get this part lit up. And then I'll press in a little bit deeper into the cave and see if I can find any drip zone down there. And oh, hello, Mr. Zombie. We'll take care of you now. Ooh, baby zombie. I think I'll take care of him first. And then we'll... Ah, jeez, big guy. And then we'll take care of the other two zombies. One more to go. And there we go. Zombies taken care of. But this cave is not giving me any joy either. As you can see, we've got some granite. We've got some bird poop over there. And we have got some spiders. Ah, oh, no creeper. Okay, there we go. That's much better. What the heck happened there? I have no idea. Anyway, let's see if we can take care of that spider over there. And I think I'm wasting my time. Yep, we've got a big patch of darkness. There's a creeper down there. Let's see if we can hit him. Got him. And then let's just light up a little bit and see if we see anything that we were looking for. And no, not really. Ooh, another creeper down there. Let's just take care of him. Oh, it's too short. And there we go. Another creeper bites the dust. All right, so... Um, yeah, as I was saying, I think I am wasting my time in this cave. And ladies and gentlemen, after searching through six caves in cave number seven, I have finally found some luck. We have some dripstone. It's not a ton of dripstone, it's just a little veneer here and there, but it is dripstone nonetheless and I am going to collect it all. So let's get down there and let's go get all of this beautiful dripstone. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough, but it's good enough to get a start. And yeah, as you can see, there's not a ton of it, but we can get some and we can finally start working on the concept for our cave. Now let's just start on one end, work our way through, uh, let's just block off this water and not get washed over the side. And then I'm just going to dig up this entire patch over here and this should give me a few stacks. 
And it may seem like I'm being cruel, but I'm actually doing these poor glow squids a favor. As you can see, they keep washing up onto the stone over here and then suffocating out of the water. So I was in reality doing them a favor. But they have left a ton of glow ink all over the place and I am happy to collect it. Let's see, there's another little bit over here that I haven't explored yet. And we have... We, we have more, we have many, many mobs. We've got zombies, we've got skeletons, and we've got a fight on our hands. So let's take care of the zombies first, and then let's move on to the skeletons. That's one taken care of, and the other one is being crafty. Oh, he's very crafty indeed, but we are also crafty, and he is gone. So let's just check out this area, see if we've got any more goodies on this end, and it seems we do not. So let's collect the last of the dripstone up there and let's go home. And yeah, that was all the dripstone that I could gather here. It's time to make our way back home and we're just going to fly straight up out of here. And, um, and I have no idea where I am. I can't see any landmarks that will tell me where exactly I am. Um, there's some goats over there. Let's stop and ask for directions. Excuse me, sir, do you know the way home? I think he does not. And finally, I have found a landmark. That little patch of snow over there is where my cherry biome was. And it was the smallest, most pathetic cherry biome you will ever find in your life. But it guides me home right now, which is good. And the windmills and the castle blink into view telling me that I have arrived home and I have some dripstone in my pocket which means I can get to work on my cave at least get a concept going and then we'll see how much more I need so now that I've got my dripstone I'm going to start layering it onto the cave walls and the cave roof and it's going to be a slow process at first because right now I don't quite know what I'm doing yet as I get a little bit more confident with this, it'll go faster, but right now it is a very, very slow process. I haven't figured out the best way of scaffolding for this. I haven't figured out the best way of placing this. And yeah, this is going to take a while. So let's just place a few blocks. We'll take a look, see what it looks like, and then we'll judge what to do from there. And that is a pretty good start. So let's do the same on the other side and see what we've come up with. And it is going quite well. I've mixed in some granite. I've mixed in some packed mud. And I think that gives a nice bit of texture to these walls. I've also added some stalactites. And then I will add a few stalagmites on the bottom once I've figured out the floor. But for now, I'm going to have to dig out a little bit of this area over here. And then I'm going to just line the floor with some dripstone as well. So let's just start. I'll take off this layer as well. And then I'll start bringing it out to meet in the middle of the path over here. Need to dig away this part. And then let's get all of this dripstone in here. I'll mix in a little bit more granite and packed mud. And then we'll have a good idea of what we're dealing with. And we are building a big stalactite down here. I wanted to match up with the stalactite from the roof and then see what it looks like when these two join up. However, I think this might be a little bit far. Yeah, I like the effect, but not right there because at the top it's a little bit long. So we'll definitely do this, but not right here. And there we go. The first section is coming along very, very well. Now the next thing I want to do is add a few support beams in here because the dwarves built this cave and of course there are going to be some of their work still present. And of course they knew how to treat wood properly so that it would last for centuries and that is why we still have some of these beams to show over here. Now let's just match that up and then I think yeah that, that looks pretty good. Uh, I think once I've joined in the dripstone from the sides this is going to look amazing. However, I think this is not necessary. And quite possibly, I need to raise up this cross beam one block. So let's just go over here and let's bring it out one block higher. There we go. 
just two more blocks in here let's get rid of that one and then let's take out the beam at the bottom and that should give us an awesome little support that the dwarves placed here so long ago now another feature that i want to bring into this cave is of course some of the ancient dwarven architecture that has survived that has not yet been reclaimed by the dripstone and i want it just peeking out in the walls here and there like for instance right over here we're going to have this patch as soon as i get rid of this dirt over here and then we're going to replace it with some stone and that'll give us the impression that the dwarves built things to last and there are some things that have outlasted even their civilization so let's just get a few more pieces of stone in here i think a nice piece of chisel stone right there and of course the dwarves were masters at using the environment to their advantage and they used natural resources like lava not only for light and for warmth but also for fuel for their forge and here and there as some decoration which is exactly what they've done over here and that's going to be one of the features that i'm going to have throughout this cave one of the things that have survived and i think it is going to look amazing and i just remembered why i don't use lava as decoration because it sets everything on fire and i have a bad track record with fire if you recall there was a fire in the village not too long ago i had nothing to do with that um but yeah let's see if we can get this out uh get up here and see if we can take care of it from the top hey no uh that was pathetic anyway no more fire uh this is not going well maybe if i put some of these railings in front of it it will stop the fire from spreading let's see if we can get this out and yeah the iron grates seem to have done the trick we haven't had any more fires and now we can get down to some serious decoration and i think this is looking absolutely awesome just this little bit up front here is looking brilliant and i'm purposely keeping it as dark as possible because i want a nice gloomy atmosphere over here and we are just oh no let's put that in the right spot there right there there we go and yeah we haven't had any more fire issues so we can carry on with our build and yes it is looking absolutely stunning so we've got two over here and one over there and maybe i should thin that out a little bit i'll have a look at it just now but let's get another one right there and yes i like where this is going very very much now seeing as nature has taken over this cavern we will need some plants some bushes some moss hanging from the ceiling and we're just gonna pop some of these in here just some oak leaves and i think this is going to look brilliant maybe one more over here somewhere i think over there and we're gonna try our best not to overdo it so this is coming along brilliantly and the one thing that i have learned is that i have absolutely nowhere near enough dripstone to complete this build just this little section has taken almost all that i had so it's back to finding a cave and i have spent more than two and a half hours in this episode searching for dripstone but finally ladies and gentlemen i have hit the jackpot this is going to be more than enough to get me over the finish line and this is just a small part of this cave there are much much bigger patches of dripstone all over and i'm going to start over here collect a bunch of this and i think i'm gonna collect me a shulker box full of dripstone so let's start right here and then we'll move a little bit deeper into the cave and there's some nasty things hanging out over there but we can take care of them as you can see there is dripstone just all throughout this cave and oh yes look at this this is what i've been searching for this is the mother load these big pillars contain a ton of dripstone and i'm gonna collect it all so let's just light up around here just so that we don't get surprised by any creepers or skeletons i think i'll just go up here and light it up and oh skeleton let's just get rid of this guy yeah there you go buddy anyway let's light up this section and then i think 
we can get down to some serious dripstone collecting. Not too much on this side, but I think we've got more than enough down where we just came from. And we have collected a ton of dripstone. It is night and I am just looking for a place to sleep. I have no idea where I am and I'll try and find my bearings in the morning. But for now, I'm just looking for a bed to spend the night so that I can get back home. And jeez, uh, where are these guys keeping their beds? A uh, zombie over there. I'll go in the opposite direction. Thank you. And we have a bed. Get up, buddy. And it's morning. I have managed to locate my bearings. And the bad news is that I have run out of rockets. And in my shulker box, I also have no more left. Which means I am going to be hoofing it. I have to walk home. Now, that is usually not too much of a problem. However, in this case, I just happen to be more than 1,000 blocks from home. And, uh, yeah... Not a position I want to be in, but it's not like I have a massive choice. So I think home is sort of in that direction. Uh, let's just walk around this lake and I think we'll be fine. And at last the terrain is starting to change. I think I'm getting closer to home. And we've got a jungle in front of us. Fortunately, we've also got a nice big hill. So if I walk up here, make my way to the very tippy top of it, I can probably get a good launch and glide for a few hundred blocks. And there's a big ravine in the middle, which means I can glide even further. Now let's see if I'm able to make it to those trees in the distance. That's my goal. But it's a bit of a tall ask. So let's just have some in-flight dinner and carry on. And indeed, I, I did not make it. I fell short by probably about 20 or 30 blocks. But no matter, we are out. We have covered quite a bit of distance with that glide. And we can now carry on. So I'm just going to make my way up the side of the hill over there. And oh, look at that. Two beautiful little parrots next to each other. Very, very cute. Anyway, let's climb up here. And then we'll glide over to that side and carry on up the hill first let's get rid of these leaves and hopefully once i get over this hill things will start to look a little bit more familiar i do have a sneaky suspicion of where i am and yep i am almost there so let's carry on and there we go the windmills are once more beckoning me home and this time i am confident that i have more than enough dripstone to finish up this cave. And here we go, cladding the entire cave roof with some dripstone. I'm just going to go along, see what I come up with, and I really don't have a plan for this. I'm just doing it randomly, and I think that's working to my advantage because nature forms in random ways sometimes. So the more rough I can get this to look, the more realistic and authentic it will look. But this is still taking me a very, very long time. So I think it is just about time for us to pop into a time lapse and speed things up. Let's get going. And the cave is done and it is looking absolutely fantastic. 
You can see all of the dwarven architecture peeking out through the dripstone, not yet reclaimed by nature, and I must say this has turned out exactly the way I had hoped. But that, ladies and gents, is unfortunately all we have time for today. This has taken a little bit longer than I expected, and this episode is going to be part one of two. I really do hope you enjoyed the episode, leave a like if you did, and if you want to see part two, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye bye.